Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Michael Pena Senior Show. This is episode 110 here, January 11th, 2019. This is a show that helps you live on less than you make, stay out of debt, so that you can live and give like no one else. Listen, Dave Ramsey said, Community is an important part of transformation. You want to take control of your money? Get involved with the community that's doing the same. And, um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to quote Dave Ramsey a lot because right now I'm involved with Financial Peace University. It seems to be possibly the missing link of what I needed. Um, I hope that I'm going to be able to teach you better by being taught myself. And um, I'm, I'm in a group with Meg. We went to our first class on um, Wednesday, January 9th, I believe that was. Yes, it was. And um, I'm also walking through it online with Michael and my daughter, Shannon. So I'm kind of going through it three times at once. And um, it's important. It's important. And, and I'm getting it right away. And... Um, you know, it's a value. It, you're going to get a return on the investment that's incredible, I believe. I mean, it's $129 to join Financial Peace, but the the, the, the value is beyond the money that you spend. And, um, you know, you want to get involved with Financial Peace University, go to DaveRamsey.com and you can sign up right through there. It, it, it I can't say enough about it already. And I'm going to be talking a lot about it because I talk about my money on this show. And right now that's involved in my money. So, um, you know, the biggest thing, again, that I always talk about is the budget. And Rachel Cruz said, a budget is permission to spend. And, and it's the truth. If you do the budget the right way, it doesn't mean that you can't spend money. And, and I see that I have a lot of trouble with the budget. And I'm going to tell you why in a, in a couple of seconds. But I, I see a lot of people just want to ignore a budget. They're afraid of the budget. They think that it's going to be restricting. It's homework. I don't know. I mean, but if, you, you, if you've if you got an income and you're at home and, and you're single, you're married, whatever, you need to have a budget. You need to know where your money's going if you want to be successful with your money. And if you want to just be a fly-by-nighter, you don't care about where your money's going, then, you know, then don't make a budget, I guess. But um, the first thing, you know, when, when I was saying, you know, I wanted, I like that Dave Ramsey quote about joining and being involved in the right community. And I believe that my community continues to grow every day. I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to build my own business. I'm trying to do everything that I can for you out there that are listening. I mean, if you haven't hit the subscribe button or the bell on, on, on my show, please do that. So, you know, when I got a show going on and, um, please subscribe to this show. You know, I know that I went back to my old way of recording the show, but I'll be live YouTube live January 27th. I tried to do a couple of shows live and, um, I got mixed reviews, but <laughs> right now that will be YouTube live January 27th at 7 p.m. And um, listen, follow me on Facebook and, and, and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'm going to try to start doing more social media things to help you with your money. So, um, and I want you to be part of that community. That's what it's all about, about us helping each other within our own community. All right. But to get back to the budget, that was the biggest takeaway I had from my first class of financial peace because again I hammer home the budget to you and um I feel like I I I missed something while teaching the budget to a lot of people and it's something that's very interesting to me and, and it's very could be very difficult to you also and it's difficult to me it's it's what they recommend for your percentages in your budget which I've never said to you before so in other words when um, you're figuring out your budget, you should write down these percentages. Get a pen and paper out right now because I want you to do your budget the correct way. When you're doing your budget, you know, you want to split it into different categories. And those categories should be a percentage of the income. Okay. So if you could do these percentages again as close as you can, you can have a good tight budget. But also, what it's going to show you 
is you're not going to be able to hit these percentages if you're in debt because your money's going to other places. Your money's going to places that you don't want it to go, really. But get a pen and paper out. I want you to try to make a budget according to these percentages. And that's what I'm attempting to do this month. Again, I'm trying to continue to learn, continue to change. All right. The recommended percentages for your budget. The first thing is giving. All right. And this is tough for me. I mean, they recommend 10% of your income to giving. Now, I'm trying to do more giving. And, and giving can be like we went out to a restaurant. Meg and I Meg and I went out. I took her out for her birthday. We went out last weekend. And giving can be the, the, the fact that you give a bigger tip. I mean, the recommended thing for tipping is usually 15%. I think I was giving like 40% tips because I want those people are working hard. I don't think anybody wants to wait on tables, but that could be part of your giving. And that's what I consider part of my giving is when I go out to restaurants, I, I like to give because I used to wait on tables and bartend. So I want to give to people like that. But recommended 10% of giving. You figure out where you want that 10% to go. Another 10% is the savings. Okay, so we want to be able to save. If you're on baby step um, one, which you're trying to save up $1,000, you, you want to try to save that as quickly as possible. And when you get into baby step three, that 10% is going towards your baby step three. Okay, so once you've got $1,000 saved up in baby step one, that 10% savings is actually going towards baby step two, paying off your debt. All right, so 10% giving, 10% saving. Then you want to allocate 10 to 15% of your check towards food. And, and that's been my most difficult area. I've, been, I've talked about it a million times when I, when I talk about budgeting. Um, budgeting for food has just been difficult because I like to eat good. I like to eat right. And, it, and it's difficult. It really is. Such as the, with, with basically I've got four adults and a baby living at home. It, it can get hard. But 10 to 15% towards food. Then you'd want 25% of your take home income to go towards your mortgage. If um, your mortgage is over 25% of your take home income, you gotta look at that. You gotta get in touch with me. We gotta be able to get and talk about that because um, that could eat up a lot of your money. We recommend 25% of your take home income towards your mortgage, okay? Uh, and then five to 10% towards utilities, 10% for transportation, you want to have some fun money. You do want to be able to go out and stuff like that. If you're in baby step two, again, fun money goes towards baby step two. But about 5 to 10% of your money can go towards fun money. All right. And that's, you know, going out to eat. Whatever you want to do for fun. I don't know what that is for you. But that, and when you're in baby step two, see, I've already given you two categories that are going towards baby step two. But, um, and then you want about 5% going to clothing. 5% towards entertainment. And then 5% just for miscellaneous. And I found that kind of interesting to have 5% going towards entertainment because, I mean, miscellaneous. Because I've had some situations come up and, and um, it's not budgeted. Next thing you know, my budget is ruined. So you, you automatically put 5% towards miscellaneous. If you don't use that miscellaneous money, you roll it over into the next month. You put it towards whatever baby step you're on. But, but basically what we're looking at is having an opportunity to um, auto-correct if you make a mistake with your budget during the month. So um, I hope you wrote those down. I hope that helps you out. That's where I'm at right now in financial peace is um, we went over the budget. So um, I wanted to share that with you. And that was the most important takeaway with me. But also being a financial peace is being part of a community that's doing the same things that we are doing. And... Um, I loved going to the group. It felt really good to be with people that are involved with Dave Ramsey like we are. And, um, you know, I thought it was funny. I put a lot of information out there. If you follow me on Facebook, uh, whether you're a friend of mine, you can friend me on Facebook. If you tell me, you know, you know me from the Michael Pena scene show, I'm going to accept your friend request. And, um, but I put a lot of information, whether it be on Pena Financial Coaching or my personal Facebook about financial situations. And one of the biggest things is, you know, how the new millennials are saying there was a survey done and they're saying that they don't care about debt. 
they're going to die with debt. And, you know, the people were commenting on it. And, and I just simply said, you know, live on less than you make. Um, you know, like I say at the top of the show, live on less than you make, stay out of debt, and then be able to put 15% away. And somebody commented, is this Mike Pina or is this Dave Ramsey commenting? To me, that was a compliment. Because, you know, my community thinks like a, like Dave Ramsey. We want to be able to think like Dave Ramsey. You want to be successful like that. You got to live that way in order to be that way. So that was my takeaway from that. You know, real quickly, I'm going to go into some Pina Financial news now. Um, again, brought to you by Tom B. Tom B. always sends me something. I'm going to bring it up on Pino Financial News. But, I mean, I think we all heard about Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos, after 25 years of marriage, is uh, getting a divorce. Now, I don't know if they signed a prenup. I, I prenup, I seriously doubt it. He's got four children with his wife, or uh, going to be soon to be ex-wife, Mackenzie. Mackenzie was actually one of Amazon's very first employees. So, um, you know, I'm doing the math. He's estimated worth is $137 billion. Is McKenzie going to get half of that? That's going to be interesting to see. Because um, being with them for 25 years, he built Amazon with her there. Um, you know, that's interesting to see. And I'm going to really kind of want to know how that's going to turn out. But uh, Mackenzie also is a novelist. I, I saw that in the article that Tom B. sent me. I'd like to get these books to see what she's writing about. Her book, The Testing of Luther Albright, it also traps. No idea what they're about, but I'd like to read them to see what she's all about. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty interesting in the news. If you, if you, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, having a successful marriage is tough. And I know that. Um, I believe that one of the biggest things of my success, the backbone of my success, has been my marriage. And I don't hide that fact. I love my wife and I love, um, you know, the success that we have together and building our life together. So that's kind of sad in a way, you know, at the same time. Also, in Pino Financial News, January 13th, um, Elite Football Academy. If you've got a perspective... Uh, football player, we you got to get them out there. You got to get them going. And that, like I always say, cash only. Don't 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 use a, a credit card. No credit. No credit. Cash only. And um, I brought it up earlier, but I'm going to bring it up again. We're going to go live. Please follow me and get and, and watch my live show. I need somebody to call in. I need somebody to help me make this interesting. But YouTube live, January 27th, 7 p.m. And um, I, I've actually got like a little schedule going forward. I think I'll be going on Sunday nights, not the Super Bowl night. I'm going to take that night off. But Sunday nights, I'm going to go live. And I want you to join me. So um, write that down. January 27th, 7 p.m., all right? And we'll try to work this together. So, um, and that's what I always say, you know, because uh, this stuff keeps me going. You know, I'm trying to work as hard as I can to be successful for you. If there's something you want me to talk about, comment below, email me, coachp2210 at yahoo.com. Message me on Facebook at Peanut Financial Coaching. Whatever way you want to get in touch with me, get in touch with me. Let me know what you want me to talk about when it comes to your money, all right? But until then, I'm going to talk about my money, and hopefully that'll help you. Because you know what I say, I want to win, I want to help you win. Let's win together.